Welcome to my punk rock journey, part two. Am I a poser? I don't know. I don't care. You know, maybe I am. Probably am. Who gives a crap, right? What's up, everybody? How you doing? Welcome to the Punk Rock Review. This is a series of videos that I'm doing talking about my journey into punk rock. This is part two, and I'm going to discuss some things, some allegations being made. <laughs> uh, I really just want to talk about just kind of like what I've done, what I've been around. Give me one second. I apologize. Hold on. All right. Come on. Come on, Chris. Guy. Crazy dog. Okay, my apologies. I'm drawing a screen in my closet, and he, he hears the fan, and he doesn't know what it is, and he's like freaking out, barking. Anyways, look. The title to this is very obviously tongue in cheek, right? Uh, I don't consider myself a poser but I also don't really care that much like if that's what you want to call me by all means call me a poser it doesn't really matter it doesn't affect me I don't think about it uh, I'm not gonna say that there's a hundred percent I don't think about it because of course I do occasionally or I wouldn't make a video like this right but this is more or less me just trying to talk about just stuff that I was, you know, I want to talk about my journey a little bit more. I got called a, a, a uninformed poser the other day, and I, I was like, wow, that's crazy. But the dude that called me that, he seems to be kind of an important guy in music. And so I reached out privately and talked to him, and he's going to come on the show. Cool. Like, he's a producer, and uh, he's done a lot of things. So I'm, I'm excited about that. I, I like to... Uh, you know, if somebody wants to call me names or say something about me, I'll take it head on. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not, I'm not scared of somebody's opinions. Um, hey guys, like the stream, please. All right. I have, I have written down some notes and what I want to do is I want to read those notes and then I'm going to talk about the stuff that I'm, well, I will elaborate on the things that we're talking about on my notes. I'm a little nervous right now because I have this, I had this idea of how I wanted to do this and yeah, okay, I'll just start talking. So yeah, welcome to my punk rock journey, part two. Am I a poser? I don't know. I don't care. Um, you know, maybe I am, probably am. Who gives a crap, right? Uh, let's see here. To begin this, I have never claimed to be an authority on any of this stuff or claimed to know things that I don't know. That is a fact. I don't ever do that. Uh, I just do me. Either you like it or you don't. Uh, I've always said that I may not like certain things, but I can always respect them for the most part. Sometimes I don't. You don't have to respect anything you don't want to. Uh, I also come off abrasive and antagonistic sometimes. It's just my personality type. Hell, I don't even like it sometimes. Um, but, you know, I'm always open to learning. Always open, open to growing, helping people. These are things that I've always, always done. They're a core part of who I am, be it inside punk rock or outside of it. doesn't matter. I've always been down to learn, grow. I am very much a stubborn person, though. So if somebody goes, here's an example. Let's say that I'm making some food. I like to cook. And somebody goes, hey, I see that you're cooking this uh, steak. You know, I've been cooking for 25 years. You know, uh, if you do it like this, da-da-da-da-da. It'll turn out a little bit better. All right, see ya. I'm like, dude, screw you. I know what I'm doing. And then I continue to be stubborn about it. And then I ultimately try their method and end up liking it and having to go, yeah, dude, you were right the whole time. I don't know why I do that. It annoys me too, I promise. But I know I do it. So I, I am okay with it. I accept it. I don't let it bother me. Okay, so as, a far, as far as like, I'm being told that I have to like 
certain bands. I have to know certain information. I have to have heard certain albums in order to be punk rock. And mind you, this is by a guy who isn't even currently in punk rock music. I think he's more of a hip hop guy. It's okay that he said this stuff because he's entitled to his own opinion. My, my point isn't that I want to argue about it. It's that I want to bring some things to light and I would like some feedback on this. I want some of y'all's opinions on this. Um, what's up, George? How are you doing, buddy? Y'all can like the video, please, man. Give us a, a thumbs up. Throw some comments in here. If you got questions for me, please, man, let me have it, dude. I love questions. It helps us helps this stay, you know, uh, interesting. But so again, I'm gonna refer to my notes here. Where I'm at in this country absolutely matters. I'm not closest. I'm not close to places like the Bay Area, San Francisco, New York City, D.C. Things like that. Uh, being is that I'm in Houston, I grew up very poor, like really poor. Two families in one house poor. Like we weren't like missing meals every day, but we ate very, very cheap food. And we, we I, I, I mean, for years we didn't have a car. I mean, I, look, whatever, right? But that molds who you are. All right. And so I was poor. I was in Houston, Texas, and I had nobody around me that listened to punk rock music. So I never had the opportunity to sit down with somebody and like follow the lead. Right. And so when it came time to buy in records, being as that I was poor, I had to hide them from my mom. First and foremost, I had to be very selective. And so I know I'm repeating a few things from the last time we talked about this, but I think it's relevant, man, and it needs to be brought up. And I want to talk about it more with that guy that I'm that I'm speaking with uh, on hopefully Monday, I think. Let me bring up his name, and I'm not trying to talk crap. The dude seems cool enough, man. I'm just, this is what made me want to do a part two and a part three of this series. I've already got part three is going to end up being, his name is Dante Ross. He seems like a pretty nice guy. We talked in the, in the, in the DMs. He seems like a cool dude. Uh, but he came at me pretty hard in the comments, and I was like, what did I do to you, bro? He just said I was, he called me a poser, which is fine. I mean, you're entitled to your opinion, but I was so surprised by the way he did it. It was, it was wild, bro. Like, because I don't know an album or I don't care about Black Flag or I don't like uh, Bad Brains, I'm a poser. Like, that is the most insane thing I've ever heard in my life. But it got me thinking, dude. Like, people really think like that. I think he's about 15 years older than me. He's an old head, right? I'm an old head. He's an old, old head. Uh, the whole poser thing gets out of control and is ridiculous. Gatekeepers is necessary to an extent, but people take it too far. Yes, but where's that line? That line's very blurry. I'm not complaining that he called me. I don't care. I think ultimately he'll figure out that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a real dude. And, I, and even if he doesn't, I don't, I don't care, man. That was just the catalyst to having another conversation on YouTube, right? But... But being where I was at in the country, it was incredibly hard to get to some of this stuff and then have people around me that uh, I could get influence from. I, I found punk rock in the 90s, so I like 90s punk rock. I didn't like the way some of the other stuff sounded. I don't care about what's influential. I don't care. He's like, you know, you got to know your roots. Sure, I, I guess. I don't agree with that. I don't think you have to know anything. Like, if I get an opportunity to learn something, if I ever turned it away, no. Show me where I have. You can't because I don't do that. But I don't have the time, or at least I didn't. Here's the thing. Oh, that's what I'm, I'm so glad that I said this. Later in life, I have got the time to sit and learn this stuff and read things and listen to interviews and uh, hear books, read books, read articles on stuff, watch documentaries. And so I'm, I'm basically doing like punk rock kind of backwards, man. I found what I liked when I liked when I found it, right? And then I just went from there and went boom, forward. I never went backwards. I only went forward. Uh, and in my 20s, I was a... I was a moron i was doing a lot of drugs getting a lot of trouble and i didn't have whatever you want to call it like i just didn't care about knowing my roots right um admittedly like that stuff's great to know but i'm not a historian i didn't get into punk rock because of politics i didn't get into it because of like trying to make changes i got into it purely out of rebellion and that doesn't make me any lesser or any less valid or whatever right uh, the only kind of person that I can personally think that I would say would qualify as a poser is somebody that does not participate in their scene, only does it for clout. You know what I'm saying? People that only go to shows for their job. If you go to the shows and you turn out that you make all this stuff your career choice and you can end up making some money out of it, that's one thing. But to only be popular for being something or only doing something for clout, 
in my opinion, that's where the line is drawn. Even that, again, I'm not a, I'm not an authority figure. So you can call somebody that and you can tell me that I'm wrong. It is okay to have your opinion and I'm not going to argue with you about it. I don't care. That's just where I stand on it. But it's a very gray area. Being out here in the central United States, way, 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 way south, it is hard to find this stuff, man. It's really hard. Uh, so by the time I was at the age where I'd be learning this stuff and soaking it all in, I was working two jobs and I was worrying about paying rent. So I went to shows and I was active in my local scene. I just didn't have the time or even the desire, I guess, to go back and look into stuff that I wasn't even aware of. Especially when there was a bunch of music I didn't even enjoy listening to. That really, really matters. Because I just, I, I don't think you have to care. I don't know that there's some checklist that is out there that you have to go, okay, I like this album, this album, and this one. And it's like, you know, it's, oh man. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. But like, you know, there's not a checklist out there for you to go, all right, I've listened to the first Clash album, the Ramones, the Sex Pistols, the Damned, uh, Buzzcocks, and, and this, 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 and I like all of it, right? Okay, good. I got it all knocked out. I'm a punk now. That's not how this works, dude. It's just not. Uh, in the 90s, it was easy to define a poser because they were everywhere, and now it's harder. People like what they like. I mean, yes and no. <laughs> I mean, yeah, kind of. Um in my early 20s, I got wrapped up in drugs, and it just kind of like, I never, yes, I'm aware of Steve Albini. I, I know, I did a whole stream on it, and it sucks. I'm sad that he's gone. That guy was awesome. Uh, I mean, I didn't never met the guy, but he seemed like a cool guy. Put out a lot of classic records, um, or was involved with a lot of classic records, I'll say. But I don't know what you're saying, V. McMuffin. M M yeah, McMuffin. But yeah, man. It's, it's weird, dude. Being, being wrapped up in other things, I just never had the desire to go backwards with my journey. I went forwards with it, which, whatever. And I'm not making, like, any excuses why I did or didn't do anything, um, you know, in regards to punk rock. Uh, I just don't need to get approval from somebody, you know what I'm saying? On my personal journey, I don't need anybody's approval. When I got into punk, it wasn't because of the desire to be an activist or political reasons. It was strictly personal and all about rebellion. As far as I can tell, punk means something different to different people. Like, maybe your reason for getting into this was police oppression uh, you were seeing daily, uh, while other dude got into it solely as a way to express himself artistically, and then I got into it as a way to uh, rebel against my parents and being told how to dress. We all have our own perspectives and journey and how we got there. Doesn't mean we don't all have common ground also doesn't mean we all have to agree on everything. It's very strange that this is a conversation we even have to have, honestly. To me, George says, to me, a poser is basically what you said, someone who talks the talk but doesn't walk the walk. Yeah, I mean, you have to be, there is a little bit of criteria, and there is a uniform. People can say there's not all they want, but they, but they're, they're wrong. Nirvana posers. Dude, I don't know what you're saying, Viet Muffin, but I'm not dealing with you tonight. All right, next time you get on here and act ridiculous, I'm just going to block you, dude. I don't have the time to deal with it. I'm just going to be a poser, okay? Let's see. <laughs> I wrote down, I didn't know there was a criteria and a list I had to check off to be considered punk rock. That's what I was talking about a minute ago. Like, there is no checklist, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I, was, I was doing all this solo, man. Uh, my mom doesn't listen to music, and my dad was a redneck. The fact that I even found punk rock is kind of a miracle. Uh, don't abuse me because I have a platform. Embrace me. I talk a lot of nonsense, but I've shown and proven that I'm willing to learn, grow, and in most cases, change my mind even. So, yeah, man. Uh, it's... JJ says, the metal scene also has this problem. You can only like certain subgenres or, or some subgenres are required. It's stupid. Listen to what you want to listen to. No bands should be required by in any genre. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the thing is like this, man. We've gotten to a point to where the oldest generation of punkers are still around. Because punk is really new still. So, I mean, hell, metal is too, right? So, you have people that have been around since the beginning of it and they they have these certain ideals that 
it's kind of like having a kid and being like, dude, I don't like your music. It's just da 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 da. It's the same thing, man. The older punk generation gets onto the younger punk generation. I get onto people as an example of me being like this. That kid NASCAR Allo, Tim Armstrong just signed this kid. I hate that kid. I don't like him, dude. I think he's a piece of crap person and his music is terrible, right? But the dude that I look up to the most signed him. What do I know then? What do I know? Nothing. So what I think doesn't matter to that kid. Do I? Am I going to call him a poser? I mean, no. But like, let's say that I was calling him like a poser and he was a fake punk or something, right? Do you think he's going to care? No, he's not. So there's a generational gap, you know. It, it's, it's, it, it with everything. Every part of life has this, where we have this like generational argument, and uh, it's it's interesting, man. I wanted to wait until another episode to talk about like my community and what it is that I'm I'm a part of and how I participate. I don't I don't want it to come off sounding like, you know, braggadocious. Look at me. So I don't really know how to talk about it. So I'm just gonna like preemptively state, like I'm not trying to pat myself on the back here. I'm not going to make a whole episode out of this because I think it's it's just unnecessary. But like an example of how I would consider myself a legit dude is that I own a small label. I help out some bands. I have a platform on YouTube that's growing. I try to put out, uh, you know, many documentaries and have people of all uh, relevance, I guess, is the right, I don't know the right word, of, of all social status on here. I don't care, like, if you have 10 followers or 10 million, if you play cool music or you do something cool, I want to talk to you. That's my point. So, you know, I have a small platform. I try to help people out, and I go to shows. I don't ask to get in free. I buy merch. I pay. I I don't do any drinking or drugs anymore, so, like, there's nothing like that. But, like, you know, as I go get a bottle of water from the bar. I tip my bartender still, and I don't know. I try to financially support the people that are putting their time into this because while we all like to say it's not about money at the end of the day everything's about money unfortunately and we have to pay bills so uh it's it's weird man we all go with or reject our parents wait what we all go with or reject our yeah that's pretty obvious george those are the only two options my man um i'm just messing with you i'm a little tired today um it's weird though people want to contradict themselves by calling you out and they're like man you are this u.s california punkers are a different breed i think there's there's like what's the word man subsets it's all it's all like uh, relevant to where you live there's i mean you know texas punk rock has a specific sound California people act a certain way and dress a certain way. Folks from New York act a certain way and dress a certain way. And then you have, like, punk's been around long enough now to where you have, like, all kinds of stuff. Like, indie punk. You have DB, crust punk, street punk, rock and roll punk, just regular ass punk rock, pop punk. I mean, there's so many different, like, ska punk. It's, it's honestly kind of ridiculous. I agree with the money thing, though. If bands don't make a living, they can't make music and the scene dies. Facts. And it's unfortunate. There will always be somebody making music for free, right? But I still want to help them out. Like, I want to help make sure they can get food and get to their next destination. That's my point. It's not that we're trying to be millionaires, but you got to get to the next place, man. You got to get to the next show. And if you don't have gas in your van, you can't do that. That was my only real point. Uh, but it's weird because I'll have 99, uh, or let's say I have 100 comments on here and 99 of them are positive. The one negative one, I like to act like it doesn't affect me, but it does, man, because they're usually like, false generally you know and that that's what it if you say some stuff about me that's like real and you're like man you got a big nose or your name's stupid or you're fat you're old I, none of that stuff matters to me because i don't care it's all stuff i can't help and nothing but if you're like oh man you're a let's say uh oh you're a like you're a liar man i don't lie about shit what are you talking about dude like nah bro uh, i might forget something sometimes or whatever i don't go around lying to people i don't need to i, don't, I just it doesn't do you any good at 42 years old, though, I, I, I have really, what's the word, man? Like, I've, I've struggled to, to keep my life together at times. This is the first time in my life where I've been happy and I've had the time and, and, and the motivation to go back and learn things. It's funny because the, the people get pissed at me for not knowing these records. The only reason that they know that I don't know the records is because I've said it. 
I've said it. I've said I don't know these records. I didn't like this record. Um, uh, Jerry Montano, first off, what's up, bro? He says, I dig your channel. New to it, but I've been coming back to your videos. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Like That's the that's the most important thing that you could do for me. Uh, Andrew Wilson says, in UK, punk from 70s was a big social movement. Younger people stood up to their peers and questioned everything. Facts. I mean, punk is all about, it's all social movement, really, but it's all about what part of social movement is it. Because I think in the UK stuff, it was more political. In the US, it was more rebellion. And then now you just got a mixture of all of it. I personally never went the political route. I like some political music. Of course I do. It's punk rock. There's a lot of that and a lot of it. But... I don't always want to hear political music. I don't always want to hear bad religion and anti-flag type music. I want sometimes I just want to hear U.S. bombs talk about skateboarding or or whatever, man. You know, I was gonna say rancid, but they do talk a lot of plot, uh, politics. A poser wouldn't admit to that. Look, dude, uh, please, yeah, like the stream if you guys don't mind. I'd appreciate it, uh, dude. Look, a poser is what a poser is. I don't know if I am one. I don't care. I just, I don't, man. I'm an old man that likes punk rock music. I do my absolute best to participate and be a like relevant part of the scene and hold it up to the degree that I'm able to do so. Take that information and do with it what you want. But I find it odd that people get pissed that you don't know an album and you don't like the only reason people even know this about me is because I admit it and I started going back and wanting to show some interest in those albums and maybe learn something, right? It's really weird. I'm like, man, I really want to go learn this now. And they're like, oh, you suck, man. You're a poser because you didn't know that before now. And it's like, Oh, okay. Like, what a strange thing to get so mad. Um, enjoy your channel, dude. You speak a lot of sense. Thank you. I appreciate that. Aaron Ruiz says, my generation was cholo, punk, horror, punk, psychobilly mix. I think that's a lot of people, especially down here in Texas. You from California, maybe? Uh, where, uh, did I miss something from somewhere? Uh, oh, no. George is just agreeing with Aaron. Got it. I'm not a cholo, but I grew up with them. Yeah, I grew up with a lot of Latino folks. Being out in Houston, man, there's a lot of that. I wish I could speak Spanish better. Uh, I can speak very, very little of it, and I can understand a fair amount of it. I think tomorrow I might do a little video. I don't get good enough reception in my shop. I wanted to do a live stream and show you guys around, but I think I'll just do like a video while I'm at work and show you guys the store. It's small. It's really tiny, but it's mine, bro. I don't owe nobody anything. I'm not in debt because of it. It's pretty cool, man. I was able to really figure this out. I got really lucky because we had a comic book shop in uh, Katy, Texas that went under due to COVID. So we got really lucky, man. Uh, i tell you what. In, in my punk rock journey, there's a part of it I don't really talk about often because it just doesn't come up because it's not technically punk rock, right? But I met my wife when I was like in my late 20s. I was still doing a lot of drugs, and uh, we got together, and we we had a kid pretty quick, but we knew, we knew, <laughs> my man said I could cuss in Spanish, that's about it though, <laughs> uh, we knew we were going to get married, um, we've been through a lot together, she got me off of drugs, her and my, my oldest kid, I turned 11 months sober in a couple of, what, like maybe six weeks, and he just turned 11. So I said 11 months. I'm in 11 years. Sorry. Um, but yeah, it's open on weekends, George. Andrew says long live punk rock and free speech. Absolutely, man. Long live doing what you want. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise, myself included. If I tell you something and you don't like it, dude, ignore me straight up and down. Um, okay. So let me give you a little backstory about how I got to where I am right now. So my wife and I, when we first got together, she was like the college educated, going to have a good job. And I had like an okay job. I made some pretty decent money, but I was going to have to work two jobs to take care of us. And she's like, man, I really want to put my degree to some use and uh, I want to work. And I'll, you want to stay home with the kid? That's cool, man. We don't really want to spend all the money on daycare anyways, because the money I was making was like only a hundred bucks more than daycare. I think I was making like 400 bucks a week. Daycare was like 300. It didn't make any sense to work 40 hours a week for a hundred dollars when I could just stay home and hang out with my kid and just the hundred bucks didn't help enough. Right? So I stayed home and hung out with Brickin when he was real little. Then we got pregnant with Charlie. So I ended up having two little kids at home. Uh, she listened, she stayed at home for a little while when we had the, uh, Charlie. And then when she went back to work, I just kind of stayed home and I started at some point, I'm going to give you guys the short version of this. Uh, What's up? Uh, is it Jaeger? Jaeger? 
anyways what's up bro thank you for watching the channel i appreciate you man for sure for sure please like the video guys like the stream let's get it out into the algorithm i'm gonna tell y'all a really cool story about how awesome my wife is y'all will appreciate this because without her this wouldn't even be happening so in 2012 we're like together right we get pregnant 2013 we have our kiddo summer of 2013 i get sober she starts working again i stay home with the kid uh I don't know exactly what the like time frame is, but uh, like a year or two later, maybe two years later, I started doing stuff with like custom action figures and selling Magic the Gathering cards and baseball cards. I was playing Magic the Gathering a lot, and I was selling cards as I was busting open cases and just flipping cards and stuff and making decent money doing it. But it all turned into like the side hustle thing, and I was also doing like daily fantasy sports betting, and I was making pretty good money doing it. The daily fantasy sports thing got turned into an illegal thing in Texas, and it went away. I couldn't do it any longer. And my wife's always supported me, though. She's wanted me to do what I want to do. She saw me working really hard for people that I just couldn't stand. And uh, I'm a different kind of dude. So she knew that I could make something of myself, like, outside of corporate America, right? And so she helped me. Let's see. How did this go down? I'm trying to think of the exact time frame. I don't know the exact year, so I'm not going to say them. Early on when my kids were little, I started making custom action figures. And I started selling them. That's when I was doing the Magic the Gathering cards, baseball cards, Daily Fantasy Sports. All that stuff was doing okay. But when the when the Daily Fantasy Sports thing went away, I needed to find something to help me with part-time work. I started working at a comic book shop. This is right before, maybe six months before Hurricane Harvey, maybe eight months, something like that. It's where I met my buddies Josh and Chris, all my best friends right now. I met them at this comic book shop. And I worked for a dude named Noel. I started working for him. I was work, making minimum wage, but I was working like all the time. I ran the place. But I was learning the business, right? So when I stopped working for him, we moved up to Katie. I opened my own comic book shop. That was in 2000 and... Dang, dude, time flies by, bro. It was in 20... The end of 2017, 20, early 2018, maybe? Dude, come on, Planeswalkers are fun, man. MTG is great, dude. I played Magic the Gathering. Dude, here's my claim to fame. I played Magic the Gathering online with Lars Fredrickson once. Yes, dude, straight up. Uh, SB83 says, what's up, homie? I feel you. My wife is nothing like this culture, but it's why I love her. No, dude, my wife's amazing, man. We, we, we have had our problems, but we've gotten over most of that shit. We don't really argue like that no more. We occasionally, but not really. Yeah, I played Magic online with, with Lars. I, I, that's, I've talked to him on the phone a couple times. He's super nice, man. I would love to get him on this channel. So, okay, so we open up a comic book shop. Oh, okay, so Hurricane Harvey happens. Okay. A year before Hurricane Harvey, I was doing all the card selling and all that stuff, right? We lost our cards in a thing called the tax day flood. It was one year. It was April 15th of 20... I don't remember what year it was. 2016, maybe? Um, anyways, we lost our cards. We rebounded from that. And one year later was Hurricane Harvey. And we lost everything. Like our whole home. Everything. All of our paper. Everything was gone, right? So... Uh, we didn't qualify for help with from uh, FEMA for whatever reason. We qualified at first, and then all of a sudden we didn't qualify. It, it, it's a it, it's very sketchy in my opinion. But we ended up getting these loans that we had to get in order to get back on our feet. So we used some of that money to open up a comic book shop. I'd say the, a, a pretty good portion of it even. Comic book shop was doing okay for a couple of years, and then COVID happened, and we lost the comic book shop. So I decided I never wanted to. <laughs> Dave said, "What's up, posers?" <laughs> uh, SBA three, no lie behind every good man is a good woman. Facts, dude, that applies to man or woman. What? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, anyways, we lost our cars. Then next year we lost our home, and then two and a half years later it was twenty twenty. We lost our shop as we were getting ready to have another kid. So I decided I was never going to work for a company again. And I was never going to own a giant corporation. I was going to do something small scale so that I was safe. And I'm giving you guys the very short version of all this. I'm sorry. I'm rambling. Uh, 
I ultimately got opened up into an antique shop. I started going to shows again a few years ago. I, I had to stop going to shows because when I got clean, I couldn't go to shows. Dude. I, I just couldn't be around the, the people that I used to be around. And when I went, started going back to shows again a few years ago, it was crazy because like the people that I was hoping were going to be around still were, and it was, it was just, it was so amazing. Uh, what's up, Dave? Oh yeah. You got back from Rev, huh? Dave out here being drunk boy, probably. Um, so I opened up this small shop in an antique mall with whatever I had left over from the comic book shop and I sold all my comics and then I started building an inventory of records. Just, I just liked doing it. And I had a movie shop and record shop. Uh, I just recently sold the movie store so I could put more inventory time and effort into the record store. But, uh, 2022, I started the record label, uh, in 2020, I started the YouTube channel on the other, but the other channel. So this channel is my third channel to do, right? Uh, but this is the one that I plan on doing indefinitely, but, uh, yeah, dude, being in recovery, going to shows was no dice, bro. I couldn't do it. Not until I was like four years ago, maybe uh, it was, it took me a long time, but, uh, yeah, man, I started the label up on a whim. I started the record store, got it going. I mean, right now, it's it's my life is amazing. But this is why it, it, this is why I have to do the live streams. This is why I ask for donos and stuff. But this is why I also like to sell things and give stuff away. I actually left a record at the store by accident that I was going to do some kind of giveaway with. I have a NoFX album. I just happened to have two of them, so I was going to give it away on the channel. Um, but yeah, man, long story, still kind of long. I... Uh, Dave says, I'm not that drunk. <laughs> um, you know, I have been reintroduced to the scene a few years ago. I've started a label and yeah, I spent my whole life doing this stuff. And, uh, you know, that doesn't give me any kind of like credentials or authority necessarily, but it is my story. And sometimes people need to know who you are before they can really appreciate what you're doing. Uh, I don't care about classic stuff cause I don't want to, um, uh, I love you too, sweetheart. My wife is my best friend. She does. She. The only reason I can even do this stuff is because she's like, no, I, I know you can do it. That's the only reason, bro. Like, I started a comic book shop. I was so scared. She's like, no, I know you can do it. Uh, I started the label. She's like, no, I know you can do it. I started doing my own clothing. No, I know you can do it. Dude, I do all this stuff because of her. Like, that's, 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 that's that, bro. So, like, what's more punk rock than having a woman that stands behind you and props you up and then you go out and you start uh you start two businesses one goes away fuck it you start another one right um you start your own clothing company right because you want to make your own merch so that people buy something from you they actually getting something from you i don't want to have my stuff on a website if i don't have to it's mine you order it from me i'm making it myself all right i started a label because i wanted to put out cool records from people that i like that's the only reason i, I don't make no money on that shit i'll lose money every time whatever uh, no, what's up, Julie? We're going to, this is a kind of a spur of the moment one, man. I'm doing this tonight. I'll be doing one tomorrow. I'm doing hella, hella streams right now. Um, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I work a couple days a week for Alamo Draft House, dude. I have to, to make sure I have enough money for the label and stuff. But like, no, I work for me mostly. And if I wanted to quit that job, I could, I just like working there, man. It's a cool place. Andrew says, who's the most important band of Sex Pistols or the Ramones? Uh, Rancid. I don't even know how to answer that because I don't think that's an, I don't think there is an answer to that question. Who do you think is the most important? Which one do you like better? You know, that's the that's the answer. The answer is is whichever one you like better. I personally like the Ramones more, but do I think that they were more impactful than the Sex Pistols? I don't know about all of that. I think they were both pretty much the same. Actually, you know what? I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. Maybe both, uh, dude, probably about equal, honestly. They're probably about equal. But, uh, yeah, man. Everything I do, I do myself, Dave. That's why Dave messes with me, bro. I, uh, I'm DIY to the bone. And I am not perfect, dude. I'm not some educated punk historian. Like, here's the thing. If I got on here and called myself something like that, this is the punk rock review. I review punk rock stuff. I talk about punk rock stuff. It is not the punk historian. That guy exists. He knows what he knows and as cool as he wants to be. Like, I don't care. That guy seems cool. Like, I don't got no beef with that dude. But, like, the most important band myself is the Misfits. I mean, sure. Uh, Ramones is more gooder. Pistols are more fashionable. Sure. I mean, the Pest Sex Pistols album is, like, almost perfect it's such a great record uh i think now my old age cox bar and the addicts are most influential overall if you think you can usa 
Uh, Ramones are more influential than the Addicts, dude. Like, by a lot. What? That is the weirdest statement, George. You'd be saying some wild shit, dude. George be saying stuff just to be... You're 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 an edgelord type, bro. <laughs> I like talking to George, dude. He's awesome. But you say some wild stuff, dude. Um, But yeah, man. I do everything that I want to do. I like I like Fat Records bands. I like Epitaph bands. That's my favorite stuff of all time. That doesn't make me not like tragedy. It doesn't mean I don't like Grimple. And because I like tragedy and Grimple, it doesn't mean that I have to like The Damned or I have to like The Addicts or I have to like The Sex Pistols or I have to like The Ramones. You don't have to like anything, dude. There's nothing... I was just saying that because they are older than any other punk bands. Yeah, but that doesn't mean they're more influential. There's bands that were before those bands that aren't influential at all because nobody knows about them. And they invented what became punk sound. Sure, I don't know. I don't agree with that. But, you know. Negative approach is a good oldie. Uh, yeah. Negative approach rules. Um, but yeah, man. Basically, the, 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 the moral of the story tonight is like, you do whatever you want to do, man. Do whatever you want, man. If, 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 if you like uh, MGK, but you also like Bad Brains, like... I don't necessarily understand that, but I don't care. Like, you know, you have to like Ramones. You don't have to like anything. Junk rock rules. Sure, I don't know what junk rock is, but yeah. You can appreciate a band's impact without liking them. Yeah, I mean, I can even say a band sucks and still appreciate what they did. Like, dude, this whole idea that you can't say something that contradicts something you uh, that you said otherwise is wild. Everybody that I've ever met in my entire life has contradicted themselves to a certain degree. Even the people that say stuff to you about how you're contradicting yourself will often contradict themselves in the same arguments, okay? The other early Cox bar was garage skin rock that influenced the later punk UK sound. Yeah. I mean, sure, but there was bands before Cox bar that had similar sounds to them that influenced other... It's... You, dude, you can trace it as far back as you want to. It, 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 honestly, you can go all the way back to like Elvis and, and the Beatles if you really want to. Um, you know what's funny is I didn't like... Uh, <laughs> that's like your opinion, man. <laughs> uh, I didn't like Cox Bar as much as I do now. But they're like, yeah, like, like six, seven years ago is when I really just... like I always liked them. I had Shock Troops, but like six or seven years ago... It just clicked, and I was like, dude, this is my favorite band of all time. <laughs> Dead Kennedys is your favorite band from the USA? Uh, see, I don't like them at all. In fact, I respect you more if you don't like it. <laughs> I mean, look, dude, I, I like a lot of stuff, and I'm also really, really, like, I do. I am kind of edgelordy. I'll say things just to annoy people. I know I do that, and I don't even know why. It's dumb, but it's fun to me sometimes. Like, I overreact to stuff. Like, let's say, uh, this is why I do good YouTube content, because I'm super animated, and I'm very, uh, what's the word, man? I have, like, I'm very, uh, I don't know what the word is. Anyways, like, I'll be, like, listening to an album, and, and in my head, I'm like, yeah, it'd be cool. But on the, on the video, I'll be like, yeah, this is terrible. Like, it's so stupid, but... It's compelling content. It gets people talking, doesn't it? I don't look with anybody that doesn't at least like the Ramones, Motorhead, or ACDC. I can guarantee if you don't like one, we have nothing in common. I mean, sure. I can't argue with that. I think that Motorhead, while I like them, are incredibly overrated. But I do like them. Battle Ruins. What does that mean? Wait, is it Battle Ruins. For a minute, I thought you meant Battle Hymns, like that Suicide Machines album, and I was like, good record. But that's not what you were talking about. Dude, what about this, like, uh, natural cotton-colored shirt that, uh, shout out to, um, Sean Condon of Oil Change and, uh, Vertex Bootlegs, also Digital Malaria, for making this sweet shirt and sending it to me. I love this stuff, dude. You got Charisma, dude. D&D &D stat. I don't know what the D&D &D things mean, but thank you for the Charisma compliment. I appreciate it. Dave Slayer says, Psh. Oh, about the about the Motorhead comment? Well, you don't have to agree. I don't expect you to, Dan. You never agree with anything I say. <laughs> but, uh... Man, Motorhead's awesome, though. But uh, I, I, all their, their... That was an edgelord statement. I told you! <laughs> That's awesome. 
The production on Nevermind the Bullocks is awesome. I agree with that. That album's great. I haven't listened to it in a long time. We should do that one sometime. Uh, the weirdest things get my channel in trouble, though, so I don't know if that one would fly, but I wouldn't mind listening to that. I think I'm going to do a band hit me up on Instagram. I'm going to be talking about their stuff pretty soon. I get of a, uh, oh, you did mean Dungeons and Dragons. That's okay. I wasn't sure if that's what you meant. My wife used to play D&D. I can hear my wife talking out in the hallway. I don't know if the kids are being crazy. Oh, y'all, y'all want to see some stuff I got today? Have y'all heard this band? Let's see. Propagandi is a good Canadian band. A bit political. I think they were on fat. Yeah, Propagandi is like, I don't like that band very much. They do have one good song. I like the party fucking hard. That song's pretty rad. They're okay. They're not like bad. I just never really got into them. Uh, y'all ever heard the Slads? We might have to listen to this tonight. This is so good. I also got Beton Armé. And I got two of the last Women Army albums I, or uh, releases that I didn't have. Uh, I'm very excited to own these finally. This one is on pretty, pretty, pretty. Nim Vind is good. I don't know what that means. Dude, check out this pretty pink wax, bro. Are you serious now? Like, what? And then this one's on red. Man, I always wanted to be a poser. I'm glad I panned out. Oof, look at that. I need to make sure and go listen to Sham69 before I listen to any of this modern stuff, though. I don't want to get anybody upset. <laughs> Let's see. I only, my only jam by Propagandia Ska sucks. Eh. Heavily agree that people get too hung up on what other people like and dislike. My answer always is, if you're, I don't give a fuck, then why are you so bent out of shape about what I like or dislike? Who gives a shit? Facts. I love Ska. Nim Vind the band. I don't know what that is. Spin it on which one? Let's listen to the, uh, the slads, bro. This is so good. You know what? Let's do it. Let's listen to the scat, the slads. <laughs> 